bit by bit uh, back for another one of our podcasts. Uh, so if you're you know, listening on the podcast, I'm um, here with Janet. What's if up? you're watching the video, you can obviously see her. <laughs> um, and today we are going to be talking about um, this recent announcement that Animal Farm by George Orwell is going to be made into a video game. Uh, which is kind of interesting and weird. I mean, I'm not, I guess I wouldn't be so surprised if a book was being made into a video game, but Animal Farm seems like a very mm-hmm. particularly strange one to have in there. Um, and so just some information very briefly about that. Um, Hold on one second, sorry. I have really clear noise. this isn't going yet. Okay, thanks. It's going. Okay, go, go ahead. ahead. Just jump in, I'll just cut that. Yeah. Just some brief information about that. Uh, so it's going to be happening from some developers, including Bossa Studios, uh, the Chinese Room, and uh, A Brave Plan. It's not clear what role they're all playing in the development, but they're all sort of been talking about how they're on board. Um, and players in the game are going to take on the role of one of the animals um, on the farm, on Manor Farm is what it's called, and uh, it's going to be happening like just prior to the revolution uh, that happens in the book. And so basically it's like a choice-based game, and so you get to see how your story choices um, and like how you run the farm um, kind of cr- has these consequences, mm-hmm. and I don't know if it's going to like lead into the revolution or whatnot. It seems very interesting. Um, and I think even more interesting than that is that it's, um, according to the game's website, animalfarmgame.com, it's going to be a fairly political game. A quote that's pulled directly from their website is, uh, we're living in in very disturbing times. Whilst we all thought that the world was making real social progress, we actually fell asleep and failed to notice dark corporate and political powers silencing all dissent. Speak for yourself, right? (laughs) Yeah, I know. It's like, uh, okay. Um, we are dedicated to maintaining an independent creative process, responsible only to George Orwell's work and to our audience. So this is happening with the sign-off from, like, George Orwell's estate or, you know, whatever mm-hmm. that means. Um, so it's it's all it's all good to go. It's all um, supervised. It's all supervised. Um, yeah, so it, that's going to be interesting. I definitely want to play it. Um, but just kind of on that topic, we were thinking of what other... Um, books would we be interested in seeing made into games? Uh, I think we have a couple of, like, weird ones that yeah. maybe maybe you're not expecting. I don't so. think we read enough. <laughs> you know, I read, actually, I've read a lot, I've read more books this year than I have since I was in high school, but none of them are, like, really worth writing home about, you know? They're just, they're kind of just books, and I didn't hate them, but they're not like, yeah, I'd love to play a game with that. I'm like, yeah, I'd love to just never read it again. Yeah. And game you know? is so specific, too. It's like, what do I, like, want to take action with. Right, because like, games tell very specific kinds of narratives. I don't want to hinder the right. scope of game narratives, but, you know. Yeah, but like, you know, experimental poetry, the game, like, I try to think of what that could be, and I'm like, you know, you I don't know, know. I think there actually is a video game that has to do with poetry. Uh, it was an indie game that came out a couple mm-hmm. years ago. Didn't play it. I don't know if it was good. Yeah. Something like that sounds cool. It depends um, on how you do it. But like, for us, we yeah. have a couple of ideas. Yeah. So Jen, did you want to start with yours? Yeah. So um, the first thing that comes to mind, I feel like it's kind of cheating because it's like in still the video game universe. It's kind of like, it reminds me of, there was recently a Kotaku article that was um, people's drawings of cosplayers. And people in the comments were like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, it's like life Why would she imitates. Why just draw the character? Life yeah. imitates or, like, art imitates life that imitates art, basically. That's yeah, the way yeah, it goes, yeah. um, was one of the comments. And, yeah, I found that a little weird, but that was a thing that happened. So I feel like I'm kind of doing the same thing with uh, what my book is, but I always I only read, like, one of these books ever, uh, but I really liked it. It was the, like, Nintendo Adventure books, um, and the one I read was Brain Drain, which um, we, like, did some quick Googling, and I believe the premise was that there's, like, in evil Koopaling's brain gets put inside of Yoshi <laughs> or like it's swapped or whatever um and a couple other brains get swapped and things and you're like trying to figure out um just how to make the world right again or something you know classic game stuff like you, everything's messed up and you're like I have to go and be the hero and fix this and you get to make all these little decisions um I know there was one where I think you were pretending to be a shy guy or something, and you were, like, in line at the cafeteria, and they were like, do you do A or B? And then, you know, it was like, if you did A, flip to page, you know, 42. If you did B, flip to page 80. And then some ended in, like, kind of a, a book game over or, like, your death or something. So then you'd have to go back and then choose the correct one and then, you know, follow to get to the end of the book, you know? Right, um, right. That's how those books work. I would love a game of that because that story is so bizarre. And the cover is, like, so if you, you know, Google it, the cover is, like, 
it's like evil Yoshi behind bars and like Mario and Luigi are like aghast and it's just it's a weird goofy book um and I loved reading it so I would love to play like just these weird hokey adventure games with like Mario and Luigi but like story based stuff like I would love someone to make a game like that. So how would that look in your head? Like, is it is it going to be the kind of game where choices literally pop up and you either choose A or B, like push X if you want to do this and push Y if you want to do this? Or would it be something more like of a integrated like story setting where you're actually running around and doing stuff and what do you think? Probably a little bit of both. So I would imagine it being um, like you have these kind of little missions that you have to do mm -hmm. and then like in those missions, like, choices appear so you're kind of doing a little bit of like actual you know moving around and exploring and stuff um, but it wouldn't be like a platformer it'd be more of like a like a sim kind of um so yeah you know so, one like thing a sim slash visual novel i, I would play that a sim slash visual novel sounds really interesting um i mean I, I know they exist also but in this specific context i would be very interested um just a side note on um choose your own adventure books i always felt like when i was reading those as a kid i always felt like it was kind of cheap that, like, sometimes you would choose the logical thing, and then you just die anyway. And it was like, there's no rhyme or reason to my choices, you know? So you felt like, and I was, like, six, like, screaming at us about, like, um, um, so I, I just, like, if it was a video game, mm -hmm. I would want it to feel like, uh, you know, my choices, like, had an impact that seemed to go along with those mm -hmm. choices, as opposed to just, like, do you want to... <clears throat> jump down the scary hole or wait for backup and then you're like oh wait for backup and then it's like wow someone just came and stabbed you in the face and it's like what why you know and it's like, how, in the hole. how would have i known i had to jump in the hole i like the ones that are like uh i don't you know i'm not saying you get those choices but i would want um i would want the game to have more complex choices yeah, like a little like, less maybe like a little less immediately punishing right that's something i really maybe liked it about comes down the line or yeah and that's something i really liked about like um like the original life is strange like i thought that was really well done because it was so such little things and then later it's like oh you forgot to like tell stacy her shoes weren't tied because you were busy going to the cafeteria and, and now, now stacy's dead yeah now she's dead you know it wasn't that crazy yeah, but um but it felt that crazy sometimes, sometimes i was like oh. Yeah, um, but so that was interesting, and, and I know that yeah. also we did a review um, maybe about a month ago about uh, Until, Until Dawn. Dawn. That was very choice-based. It was like you had to like kind of look one direction or the other with your cursor to pick a choice, and I remember one that seemed like maybe we shouldn't have done that now that I'm thinking about it, but I was like in the moment, I was like, let's take all the risks, and like you were playing as one of the characters. I don't even remember her name anymore because the game is that unimportant to me, um, but it was like, you know, you hear a scream, like... Like you, you go in the direction do, of the like go the screen. direction of the screen, or do you keep with the group? We were like, let's go follow the scream, and then her like jaw got ripped off or something. So, um, spoilers. Um, and so that made sense, I mm -hmm. guess. But at the same time, it felt very immediately punishing. I, I want a chance to redeem myself after making a poor choice. Yeah, I want the same thing in life. Like, it's not always true, but you know, I still want that. Um, yeah. So, I would play that game. Yeah. Yeah, so. I also now want to read that book. I yeah, I, I, need, know to, I need to reread it. Come I on, Nintendo, what are you doing? I have, it my, gems away. I have it in my apartment. It was like a classic from my childhood. I bought it for my brother um, like a few Christmases ago. It's like a like a joke. cutesy little like, look at it from our normal kids. Yeah, Aww. but. Okay, I'll have to borrow some time. Yeah. Uh, speaking of things I have to borrow from you, um, the book I think I would pick somewhat strangely because I haven't read it is uh, Aziz Ansari's Modern Romance. And the only reason I'm bringing this up, even though I haven't read it, is because we were like thinking about books before this and Janet was like, I know what I'm going to pick. And I was like, oh, I bet you're going to pick Modern Romance. And she was like, no. And um, so that's how it came up. And I would pick that one because to my understanding of Modern Romance uh, is like it's Aziz Ansari sort of commenting on the modern dating culture. And uh, I think it would have, be really interesting to have a video game that was about modern dating culture mm -hmm. in like a really real way, like a like a just like a straight up honest, not all, any of this hokey stuff. And then you like just wow, this is where we're at today, you know. Um, and so maybe it would be like a character navigating the ins and outs of like Tinder. Um, yeah, so it'd be like. Over, which is maybe, another. It's like a. It's like the cosplay thing. <laughs> I know. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, maybe I want the game that, like where you can play a game where you're like on Tinder because I'm like not actually on Tinder and I don't really want to try Tinder and so maybe I'm like well if I could try it in a video game it's like I thought of that as being fun as well. Yeah, um, fun. Because yeah. then it's like it's not like you're actually swiping through human beings being like no no no. But on which a is video, also <laughs> not not bad either. I know. <laughs> but on a video game, you know, it's, it feels a little interesting. Plus, I mean, you could have sort of like, um, 
I think it'd be it would be also somewhat like maybe the end goal could be one of a, a number of things. Like maybe maybe one end goal could be like okay, this character. Okay, okay, I've got it in my head. I'm making this game, guys. So you can choose a number of different set characters at the beginning of the game. Mm-hmm. So one character he he's like a hopeless romantic and he really wants to settle down. And then another character is like this woman who's like more of a serial romantic and doesn't want a commitment at all and mm-hmm. like this other person so they all have their own goals. That's how you describe that as serial romantic. <laughs> that's a that's a phrase. People people use that. Like so then in that case does she just want like a lot of romance but not any like she wants to have a lot of rom- different romances. Okay. Is this like like a serial killer is this like, is this like people? a romance or like a romance? Like, you know? Depends on the person, I think. Okay. Because maybe you also have someone who's called, like... I've never heard the romance one being called serial romantic, but I like that. I feel like it's a lot of... I feel like... It's a lot fluffier. Yeah, serial romantic. Um, it's like, You yeah. can also have someone it's who's... It's just a serial romantic, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's a much more, more polite, um, positive way to put it. Um, and so, you know, so you can have different goals for the different characters, and then maybe, you know, you, like, make decisions that gear towards those goals, and you, like, get end game if you get what you want. So... Mm-hmm. Like, um, but then you have all these obstacles that come up that I assume Aziz talks about in his book that I've mm-hmm. wanted to read for forever, where it's like, yeah, you, like, are this hopeless romantic and you're trying to settle down, but, like, none of these girls are texting you back, you know? Like, what the heck? Or, like, giving you all these lame lines, or, like, you really like this one person, but now, like, started dating your friend over here. Like, I don't know. I, I don't Sounds know horrible. If this is a thing. <laughs> yeah. But, but, I just think it would be very interesting. I think it'd be very interesting, and, like, I don't know. Just it's just fun. Plus, yeah. also I think like the concept of like exploring a romantic ideal different than your own, mm-hmm. it's kind of interesting. I think that's why I like Sims sometimes. <laughs> yeah, because they live lives that I don't want to live, but exactly. I want to see what they're like to live. And I like um, I really want to actually explore romance games more in general because like as you know, you guys who have been following along on the channel, such as the podcast now, I love Lucy Blundell's One Night Stand video game. Yeah, it's like one of the best games I've ever played. I love it. It's great. Um, yeah, and that has, um, you know, a strong element of romance as well, or at least, like, a, a factor of relationships mm-hmm. in this idea of relationships, uh, be them sexual or, or other, um, and navigating that, and that was really interesting. I guess other things the book gets into, it's, it's like, so, for those of you guys who don't know, like, what this book's about, so Susan Sari partnered with a, um, what is it, a psychologist? Yeah, like, a psychologist, yeah, because I'm like, the other one's the drug one, so a psychologist, um, to do, like, kind of, it's, like, half study, half, like, comedy on modern romance. So it also gets, like, all these statistics. Um, some of them are, like, you know, more formally collected, and some of them are more, like, informally collected. This isn't the proper terminology, but it's basically quantitative versus qualitative data um, that they use, and um, they do a bunch of different interesting stuff. Like, they'll talk to, like, um, one of the parts of the book was that him talking to people in nursing homes about, like, their experience with romance, and they're like, oh, I, like, um, I met this girl, she lived, uh, down the street from me or she lives in my apartment building and then we dated and then we got married and we had kids and it was like all a very like close to people and then like fast forward to modern times where like it's very unlikely for depending on like the cities and stuff they studied um like for like maybe someone living in a city to settle down with anyone like that they went to school with or that they lived in their neighborhood with or anything like that um it also has like other studies too like they have like research done on like um because part of their stuff like was looking at tinder and they looked at like what kinds of photos do well for your pictures and it's like if you're a woman like photos with you of alcohol do really poorly if you're a man photos of you with animals do really well and like all these weird like other things um that kind of factor in so it could be like part you know part like, like stats games. yeah like a yeah like part stats and stuff too like probability those games are really interesting and that'd be cool I've you seen... could even like maybe adjust your like you know how in fallout you have like the how yeah, much are oh, you like how much charisma yeah. how much you know like how much sex appeal, how much, you know... Yeah, and you have to, like, level out your points uh, and stuff? How much charm, how funny are you, how, you know, um, how I'm going. I love this. I See, I think this would be really fun. Yeah. And, yeah, and I'm sure there are games that do things like that in general, probably. Sure, but I want one, like, that's kind of, like, that's the focus. Yeah. That, I think um, that'd be very interesting. And so, or, I don't know. Or, like, just to find one. I haven't really explored the indie scene if people are already doing stuff like that. They very well might be. It's kind of hard to... So this is really specific. Yeah. Like, right. this would be really specific, but yeah. Um, no, there's games, because there's, like, you know, there's visual novels. Or even, like, um, I... Back when we were writing for Bit Cultures, we did one of the indie game craft beer pairings, and the one I did was the the Sunrider Academy, I think is what oh, it was called, yeah, yeah. and that was like a that was my first like 
visual novel type mm -hmm. thing. Um, and it was like, you're basically trying to like get through high school and find a girlfriend because your sister's giving you crap. Like that's how <laughs> she's like, you don't have a girlfriend. And you're, then you're like, questions like, I must get a girlfriend. Like that's the game and it's pretty funny. Um, but it's also a stats game because you have to get through school and like be in charge of these clubs and stuff. And so if you like get sick or if you don't have enough money to pay for this or that, whatever, then you can also lose the game. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's where the stats could come in for the Izzy's Ansari modern romance game. Um, yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah, I mean, I know Aziz isn't watching this. I wish she was, because I love Aziz. I but, know. Like, I feel I like Aziz too. would be very on board with this idea. So, I don't know. Yeah, we'll tweet this at him. We'll tweet what he says. Is. Yeah. I love Master of None. I love all the stand-up. Let's make a game, Aziz. Let's yeah. make a game. So. All right. So, <laughs> so we're close to end. All right, guys. Uh, thanks for watching, and we will see you guys here uh, in two weeks for another podcast, and next week for another video. All right. Bye. Bye. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit thumbs up and subscribe. That's youtube.com slash bit by bit. If you're listening to the podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, or Podomatic, be sure to leave us a rating. And of course, you can always talk to us on social media. We are on Twitter, Instagram, and Pinterest at bit by bit gaming. And we are on Facebook at bit by bit gamers. And you can check us out on our official website, bitbybitgamers.com, for the occasional blog post and exclusive content. Thanks for tuning in.